Hi all, welcome back. This is my channel Mohini Yadav. And if you haven't subscribed, then please do it right now. So today's topic of discussion is Cronbach's alpha, which is also coefficient alpha. And at the end of my video, if you think it is worth of liking, then please do like it and also share it with your friends, your with your knowns, everybody. Thank you so much. So before moving ahead with Cronbach's alpha, let's understand what is reliability because this is the concept where this Cronbach's alpha is widely used. So reliability is one of the factors to evaluate the quality of research. It indicates how well a method, technique or test measures something. Something is the variable which we are going to measure in our research. So this is the way of checking how well a method or technique or test is measuring. Okay. So reliability is about the consistency of a measure. Consistency means that if the same results can be obtained by using the same method under the same circumstances, then we say that the measurement is reliable. So reliability and validity are the most important two concepts which are used in order to verify the quality of your research and both of them are closely related. But they mean different things because reliability is about consistency and validity is about the accuracy. But it means a different things in the sense that a measurement can be reliable without being valid. How? For example, the thermometer is used to measure the temperature. So in case you are using the same thermometer to test the same participants and always it is giving the consistent result we say that it is a it is reliable okay this measure is reliable but when we check it we found out, out that it is not calibrated properly and the result is always two degrees lower than the actual value in this case the measurement is not accurate it is not valid although it is giving the reliable results However, if a measurement is valid, if it is accurate, it is usually gives us reliability. Okay, so this is the relationship between reliability and validity. So there are three types of reliability. First one is test retest. That is across the time, which means that do you get the same result when you repeat the measurement? For example, there are a group of participants who have completed the questionnaire to measure their personality traits and in case we are repeating the questionnaire in days weeks or months apart and still it gives the same kind of answers we say that it is a, has a high test retest reliability and in order to check it you can simply plot the data graphically in a scatter plot and you can compute the Pearson's R and in case the value is plus 0.80 or greater we say that it has a good reliability but this test retest reliability suffers from various limitations why because sometimes the participants gets lazy or they get bored while answering the questions again and again okay so this might affect their responses similarly there can be unexpected events which has happened between the uh, between the uh, measurement of the same thing so the time duration is also impacting is also one of the disadvantage in the test retest because in case something unexpectedly happened or some unexpected event happened between this duration then the perception of the participants can change altogether so this is few disadvantages associated with test retest reliability the next one is inter-rater or inter-observer, which means do you get the same result when different people conduct the same measurement? So, for example, there is one student who has sum submitted his project and there are five examiners who are going to access that student's project. And in case all the five examiners have given the different assessment for that same project, we say that it has low inter-rater reliability because all the observers are giving the different kind of the assessment. So similarly in case in your research there are more than one examiner or more than one observer there might be 
different opinions or same opinions if 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 it has same opinions then we say that it has higher inter rater reliability but in case it is not then it means it's lower but one of the biggest disadvantage associated with this type of a reliability test is that the criteria is very subjective because the observers are individuals and the subjectivity can come into the picture and can affect their opinions or their responses so this is this test and in case you want to compute it you can simply use cronbach's alpha when the judgments are quantitative or you can use an analogous statistics called cohen k this k is the greek letters kappa when the data is categorical okay now this is the third type of a reliability test which is internal consistency that is across the items so it means do you get the same result from different parts okay different parts of a test that are designed to measure the same thing okay so for example you have designed a questionnaire to measure the self esteem and now you have got the data and you randomly split, split the results into two halves okay and then you check the correlation ship correlation between the two sets of the results and if the results are very different it means that it has low consistency and if there is a higher correlation we say that it has a high internal consistency so there are three approaches to measure this internal consistency so first measure is split half correlation in which you are splitting the items into two sets and how you are splitting you can split it by the first half and the second half of the items or you can use that even numbered questions will be under the one set and odd numbered questions will be the other set and then you compute the score for each set of items and the relationship between the two sets of items is examined and if the relationship is positive 0.80 or greater we say that it has good internal consistency but in this also there is little disadvantage because in this also the subjectivity of the examiner is involved the researcher have to decide that which way he is going to split the data okay so this is one of the disadvantage associated with this type of the internal consistency the next one is kudder richardson which was developed by kudder and richardson in 1937 it is also a measure of internal consistency for the dichotomous questions dichotomous questions are the ones in which there are only two possible answers okay for that you can use it but in case the questions are also continuous code variables or other type of scales then you cannot use this approach the third one and the most important one and which is also the one which we are going to discuss detail in our presentation is cronbach's alpha and this alpha is the split half correlation one only but the only difference is that that it considers the means of all possible split half correlations for a set of items so for example there are 10 items and there are 252 ways of splitting those 10 items into two sets of 5 then cronbach's alpha is the mean of all the possible 252 split half correlation so this is the mean and this is the objective one because in this case no subjectivity is involved it is considering the average of all the possible split half correlations which are there for a certain set of items ठीक uh, okay so this is the best way or the correct way of interpreting interpreting the results of cronbach's alpha and it is used for dichotomous as well as for continuous scored variables okay so let's discuss this cronbach's alpha or we can also say that coefficient alpha denoted by alpha this sign is developed by lee cronbach in 1951 and it is the best measure for checking the internal consistency of a set of scales or test items so this is usually used when you are involving multiple questions like a scale surveys in your questionnaire and you want to check the reliability then you can use this cronbach's alpha so usually we involve multiple questions like a scales to measure the latent variable latent variables are the hidden or unobservable variables like a person's consciousness openness or neurosis 
these are very difficult to measure in real life and Cronbach's alpha will tell you whether the Likert scale you are using is accurately measuring the variable of your research or not. This is based under the assumption that you have multiple items measuring the same underlying construct or the same that is means unidimensionality of your uh, of your research is one of the assumption under Cronbach's alpha. Okay. So the formula for Cronbach's alpha is this where n is the number of items. C bar is the average covariance between the item pairs. V bar is the average variance. So C bar and V bar both are the averages. Okay. So for example, this is your covariance metrics with five items. So these are the five questions and all the diagonal ones represents the variances and off diagonal values represents the covariance. So you can use your formula where n is your 5, v bar is the average of variances. So you'll add them all 5 and you divide by 5. Then c bar is the average of covariances. So you'll add all the remaining values and you divide by 10 because the values are 10 and you have to calculate the average covariance. So you'll divide by 10. So the value is this. Now you simply put both the values into your formula and you can compute this value that is 0 0.866. Now you have to interpret this value and the rule of thumb for Cronbach's alpha result is that the value usually ranges between 0 to 1 where 0 means that the scale items are entirely independent from one another and they are not at all correlated which is a very bad signal for your scale and you have to drop that all together. And if it is one, this is the best you can achieve. It means that all the items have high covariances and the number of items in the scales approaches infinity. So theoretically, the value should be positive. That is between zero to one only, but you can also get negative numbers, which is only an indicative in the sense that something is wrong with your data and you have to cross check it. Okay, so this is the table which says that all the values above 0 0.7 are acceptable. Greater than 0 0.8 and lesser than 0 0.9 are good. But if your alpha is greater than or equals to 0 0.9, this is the excellent. Okay, so you can definitely use that alpha in case your value is 0 0.9. So this is the general rule of thumb. And usually in social sciences, Cronbach's alpha of 0 0.70 and above is usually considered as a good measurement scale okay so this is it you can also take note of all the important points i have covered under here that you have to use the rule of thumb only with question by question because confusion is often surrounded regarding the causes of high and low alpha scores because this alpha is very sensitive to the number of items in a test. Large number of items can result larger alpha and smaller number of items in a scale can result in smaller alpha. So if alpha is high, we cannot say that it is a good scale because there might mean that they are redundant questions that is the questions which are asking the same thing is involved in your questionnaire. Similarly, the low value of alpha also doesn't mean that you have to reject your scale because there might be aren't enough questions on the test. So you always have to improve your knowledge regarding the internal consistency and unidimensionality so that you can use the Cronbach's alpha in the most uh, reliable way. So, okay, so unidimensionality in Cronbach's alpha is one of the assumption, right, which we have already discussed in our previous slide, which means that the question is only measuring one latent variable at a time. But in case you measure more than one dimension, either knowingly or unknowingly, the test results can be absurd. So it is always advisable that you should break the test into parts measuring a different latent variable or dimension with each part and if you are not sure that whether your test test is unidimensional or not you can always run the factor analysis to identify the dimensions in your test so you, after doing this you can check and if there are more then you can definitely break your test into parts so this is it from my side
and if you like this video or if you have any queries regarding this Cronbach's alpha please write in the comment section and also share this with your research scholar friends or your colleagues or everyone you can think and take the advantage out of it thank you so much bye bye